Hey everybody, it's Audrey. I'm back with video number 70. And again, this is for the uh, Stash Bash YouTube Hop, which we are doing once a month and picking a certain item in our stash to use. And this month, we are focusing on enamel dots or rhinestones or gemstones. So I have these Nouveau paint drops that I got a couple months ago, have not opened them. Um, and haven't even used them. I see a lot of people like make the drops on a separate piece of paper and then or like a, a clear sheet and then like stick them on their pages later and I thought I wanted to try and use them right on my page. So I have some papers picked out and some of my photos picked out and for my background paper I wanted to kind of soften the pattern a little bit so I am adding some gesso with my finger and just um, using my heat gun to dry it. Um, and my plan is to kind of um, add a lot of texture to the background and just use a lot of these drops to create some texture and interest and um, kind of go from there and see what happens. So I'm going to add a little color to the background as well to kind of match some of the colors I have in these papers. And I'm using a mixture of watercolors and Heidi Swap Mists. And I'm just going to go through with my um, watercolor brush and just scatter the blue on and some different parts and whenever it gets too dark I just add a little bit of water um, to kind of soften the color a little bit so there I added a lot on but just adding a little bit more water to the page um, softens the color right up. I love the way the um, Heidi shine, Heidi's, the color shine um, dries when you uh, use it with a brush in some areas it gets that really pretty shimmer. Um, so I decided on the blue because this is a photo of some photos of my kids eating cotton candy at a carnival we were at, school carnival, and um, I kind of wanted it to make, make it look like cotton candy in the background a little bit, so that's why I'm using the blue, and you'll see my final design too kind of has like this um, cloud of this watercolor at the top and then kind of some pointed arrows at the bottom, and that design was kind of intentional. So. Um, I also am going back through with some pink as well to add in a little bit more of the cotton candy color, I guess. And then to add a little bit more texture and a little bit more um, interest, I was going to use the stencil and just do some like white ink in the background, but it wasn't showing up very well. And I have had the same problem before when I've tried to use white ink or paint. Um, so I just decided to go with some modeling paste because I know for sure that that's going to stand out and be white against the colorful background. And I love the stencil, one of my favorites. So I'm going through, um, just, you know, using my fingers and rubbing some modeling paste on and, um, it dries pretty quickly actually if you use a thin enough layer. Um, and I'm just kind of sticking again to the right hand side of the page. Um, and going to add a little bit over here on the left just to kind of bring the design and stretch it out that way. Okay, so I let that dry and now I'm going through with these Nouveau color drops and I've seen some good reviews about these that they um, you know, leave a nice rounded shape and um, they don't really get a little peak on them uh, when you use them on the page um, and they dry pretty quickly too. So. I'm just going to go around with the blue. I have a whole bunch of colors I picked out to match the papers I had. Um, so I'm just going to scatter these all over. And I'm going to kind of fast forward this a little bit here because I spend so I have quite a bit of time doing that. I have some blues and some pinks and yellows and purples and greens and all kinds of color. And I'm, also, I'm trying to divide the color up around the page but also use um, different size dots as well. And I learned that if you keep the tip inside the, the liquid when you're squeezing it that it helps create a much uh, more rounded um, shape. So there are all my dots and I love how they look. They're so pretty. Um, and I let them dry a little bit. I probably should have let them dry a little bit longer because some of them end up getting a little bit squished and I didn't let it dry overnight. I probably should have. Um, so if you're going to use these let them dry overnight because I think they'll stay in a much better shape. So I pulled out these um, acetate triangles that were from an old Pink Fresh Studio collection and I am just going to scatter those in the bottom of the page and I kind of wanted them to come to a point at the bottom. And I, I really love these 
the colors here. There's some teals and pinks and kind of a mustardy yellow. And then I pulled out this kind of citron green to kind of add some contrast with it, and I want it to be a little bit brighter. And I'm going to keep those triangles mostly to the bottom of the page. Um, so I have that like citron green behind my photo and I have a little tag that's the citron green and I wanted to add another little element over on the right hand side that was the citron as well. So I cut out that little heart but I don't end up using it because I lost it <laughs> in the pile of stuff on my desk and I couldn't find it at the end so I just skipped it. Um, I at first thought I was going to keep the triangles all on the bottom but that kind of orangey mustardy yellowish one uh, on the bottom there was really overpowering so I wanted to bring that color in a little bit at the top um, so I found this uh, a similar triangle on a piece of pattern paper that had that orangey mustard color in it and I brought that in at the top to help kind of draw your eye up there and then I hadn't used these wood pieces they were in with this collection as well so I thought I just add a couple of those and I thought they were really pretty and I liked the wood with um, these colors and elements. I'm just gonna kind of fool around with this a little bit here. Oh, by the way, this tag I'm cutting out right here came from the Dear Lizzie Fine and Dandy collection. And that was actually the first collection I pulled out when I was looking at these photos. I pulled out that Dear Lizzie collection because I thought that's what I was gonna use, but I ended up going with a lot of the things from this Pink Fresh. So I found a sticker, actually that came from the Dear Lizzie collection, and I pulled out some flair to see if I had any pieces that would go with the page, and of course I do, because I have a lot there. Um, a lot of those are from Cuts to Love, which is a small shop in Canada. Um, and then I also had these other kind of, they're not enamel dots, but they're kind of like, they're wood dots. So they're, they're rounded like enamel dots, but they're a little bit bigger, um, and they're all wood, but they're painted, and they're really cute. So I added a couple of those blue ones. Um, and then I wanted my title just to be, be black and white, because I wanted the colors of the page to stand out better. So I'm just going to use these black and white um, letters here. And I end up, in the final page, I, I don't put this in the video, but I actually end up stitching um, a line of pink thread between the white and the black on the title and I love how that looks so if you see the close-up later you'll see that okay so that has all dried I have stapled down my acetate um, triangles with a stapler and I'm going to back my photos with some foam here to make them stand off the page a little bit and I use always use a um, tape runner on the foam because my liquid adhesive doesn't work very well on, on the foam. And this is self-adhesive um, foam, so I just peel off the backing and stick it right on. And actually, I forgot to peel off the backing on the foam, and I put that glued that piece of paper to it, and then I realized in a minute here that I hadn't adhered it down yet, and I glued the paper to the, the backing and not the actual photos, so... <laughs> Um, also, the wood the wood veneer pieces there. I don't. I'm not sure if I show this on camera or not, but I I go back and glue those down as well because they don't stick very well, and I'm always afraid they're going to fall off. So I do end up gluing those down with some liquid glue. And there you saw me tear off the paper backing and stick that piece of paper down. So I'm just going to kind of fiddle around with a lot of these little elements and nothing too else major that I do um, to the page. Oh yeah, this is where I, that little heart is still there on the right, but somehow I lose it in all this mess, and I don't know what ends up happening to it. Um, so to bring in a little bit more of that greenish color, I back the um, this circle with that same piece of pattern paper that I have behind my photos, and that helps complete the visual triangle there with those three colors. So a group of us every month now are getting together to do this uh, Stash Bash YouTube Hop where we pick a certain item or collection um, from our stash and try to focus on that and also use up some old things in our stash as well. So it's, I love this because it really makes me go through my stash and um, actually use it um, and not just have it hanging around. Speaking of old stash, these ribbons are ancient probably eight, nine years old. So I just added them for a little bit of interest. Um, 
kind of just a little detail there in amongst the triangles. And then finally I thought, you know what, I might as well use some rhinestones too because I have a lot of those other drops on there and the rhinestones add a, add a lot of pretty sparkle. And I think that's about it. Oh, I don't show this on camera, but I do go through and do some pink stitching around the edge and then I add my journaling as well. And here is my finished page. So thanks so much for stopping by. I am going to leave a link to all the ladies on the hop. So go check out how everybody this week has, or this month has used their stash and specifically their uh, enamel dots and gemstones. Thanks so much. See you soon.